Hello everyone, welcome to another open house and this time we are over by Fiddler's Green. The little mobile home park and I was working on a build here and decided to put in this little house mainly because of this spot in this area and I was looking around, I was searching around looking for cool places to build and I found this little I guess kind of ravine that goes down to the bridge and from that bridge looking up I saw this cliff area and I thought that might be a cool spot to build a house kind of into the hillside but more of a pre-war modern style and realized it was right next to Fiddler's Greens a mobile home park and of course that was very trashed. Mm -hmm. So I had the idea that uh, maybe I would redo the mobile home park as well and make that all nice and pre-war and something of that nature. So I haven't finished the mobile home park, but I do have some ideas and I might do that as a let's build it later. So my idea here was this would be the driveway that comes in from the mobile home park and possibly the person that owns the mobile home park maybe lives here in this house. I wanted to add in this little driveway parking area here just to give it some kind of yard before we go down into the house. Pretty simple yard right on the edge of the cliff and enough room, you know, to park a car, maybe two. And a long flight of stairs going down to the house. But before we go down to the house, I'll show you a little bit of the uh, landscaping here just to kind of build up the rocks, the hillside, and used a lot of those large boulder type rocks. And also found this cool curved, I don't even know what this is from, but it works well as like a retaining wall, it has a nice curve to it. It's not a perfect curve, so I'm not able to use it on either side and make it look the same. The curve is a little sharper at one end than it is the other, but I think it works well to make it appear as though it's holding up all the landscaping up here. And it gives it a cool infinity edge in a way, right off the edge of the cliff, and you don't even see the house from here. So I kind of like that. So pretty simple upper yard area and driveway. And once again, use the curved uh, curb pieces from the grounded mod just to round off this driveway area here. It just makes it look a little more natural. It gives it, makes it a little more interesting than just a square, squared off driveway. Let's go over here to the stairs. And this is the pretty long stairway. I kind of started building the house first and did the stairs later and didn't realize how long and how many stairs it was going to be. And I just used a lot of these sanctuary driveway pieces. I just like the way it looks and I like the edge of it here. And I just figured it'd be easier to use those than, than the other flat ones. And I did have a little problem because I was running into the dirt. The hillside started getting pretty steep. I needed to get to the top because I knew I wanted to put in that driveway area. So you do see a little bit of hillside, but I still think it works pretty well. And it's a little crooked here and there, but it's okay. I think it fits in nicely with the hillside here, but it does kind of show off the house in a way that uh, I thought was pretty cool. Kind of reveals it as you come down. You see on the sides here, built up some of these uh, cliff areas and that's just a lot of the large boulders and some grass there and same thing on the other side here and whole staircase came down here into this area here which is the entryway and I wanted to make this pretty unique and as you can see it kind of is I've got this little waterfall water feature here and that uh, leads in up to the main door. Now this water feature here 
Uh, I always wanted to try and do that. I did something similar in the garage area of my Palm Hills house, and I thought it might be cool to do the water feature style here. And this is the combination of the big concrete blocks. I like the texture of those blocks. I just wish the whole block was just concrete without that wood texture on the top. So I'm constantly trying to hide it. But as far as the water feature goes, it's just the concrete blocks. And then I thought this random fence pieces looked like it might be some kind of way that, you know, maybe the water comes out and give it more kind of an industrial look. The other side is just landscaping. I was thinking about doing the double waterfall, but I uh, decided to go with this. Maybe I'll do something in another build. That could be pretty cool. But the entryway, I wanted to add in a little light too. So I took out some sections of the roof to let in some of the light. And architecturally, it just looks little better. So what do you say we go inside? Now this front door I had to build. I didn't have a door frame and I I know I wanted the floor to ceiling windows on either side um, and to do that I kind of built around the door here as you see the concrete block and the uh, the dark stone walls, which I think kind of complement each other. But there's always an issue with the top of the door up there because I don't really have a whole lot of pieces, at least on the PS4, to fill in that gap up there because uh, I did want the windows to go all the way up. So I wound up using some of those little, um, I don't know, covered things from, I want to say it might be the Mad Kia mod but use that to fill that gap up top kind of make it look like it was designed that way but as we come in we get another view out this window here a little bit of an entryway and I wanted to carry that concrete block feel through the whole house I really like houses that have that exposed concrete more of a modern take as well it has a lot of open exposed windows and natural light coming in which is what I wanted in this. So as you come in right away, you see the kitchen. In this kitchen, I wanted to really custom build and not use my typical blue pre-war kitchen. So I decided to use a lot of the, uh, the cafe counters there, drop in a sink, make it appear as though there's a sink. So I kind of used a combination of things. So if you look close, it doesn't look that great, but hey, let's just ignore that it looks like that. So yeah, I wanted to do a cleaner kitchen, something I haven't done before. So making this island, using a couple different uh, things to make this up with the uh, cafe counters and also the Noir penthouse um, uh, dresser there for the texture you know for the dark texture there and I used that as well on the back wall as well as I believe some I think it's the back of the bed as the backsplash to give that a different kind of texture and color so overall I think the kitchen really turned out pretty good considering I just uh, was using pieces that I could to try and make it a little different from what I normally do. It's similar, but a little bit different. And the checkered floor, wanted to put that in just, you know, to break it up, give it some style. Unfortunately, it's a pretty dirty looking one, but I liked, uh, I liked the size of the squares and the black and white. I continued the cafe cupboards or counters up top, just because I think uh, once you set them up, and maybe cover up with this little section here. It does look like upper cupboards, so those worked out well. And it also allowed me to insert the lights under it to give the whole kitchen a cool blue look to it, especially in the evening at night. It really lights up and looks pretty cool and unique as far as the kitchen goes. Just off the kitchen here, we have the bathroom. 
pretty small, simple bathroom with a giant Nuka-Cola feature wall type uh, art piece here. Why not? And a little locker type thing and you store some extra towels or something like that. Simple bathroom, but this place isn't that big, so that's kind of all we needed as far as the bathroom goes. And I wasn't sure in the beginning, I wasn't sure where I was going to put the bathroom, mainly because of the layout of the house. I kind of built the house up and figured I'd fill in the interior and put, you know, a bedroom, living room, kitchen, and a bathroom. Just wasn't sure where I was gonna do that. So it wound up being right here in the middle of the living room, but really wound up being the only place I could put it. But I think it works well here and it creates this interesting space here with some books, some extra storage, just to fill that space. And once again, the concrete blocks and the windows, which I wanted to carry on throughout the whole place. I also wanted to break up this wall so I wasn't using the dark stone all the time. So I used these slatted things, which I believe are from the Mad Kia mod in combination with a white backing wall. So it just gives that wall a little bit of texture. It's kind of cool rather than just a plain old wall. And threw in this giant pole here also just to break up and cover that corner and just give this house something unique rather than uh, just a regular corner there. No real reason behind that other than I just like the way it looked. So off the kitchen, you see the living area with this giant window, which has the great view out uh, to, I guess, the wasteland now. But, uh, you know, pre-war times, I would imagine it'd be a pretty nice view and pretty modern living room as well wanted to do something to make this couch and chair combination a little more unique so I added in the little triangle table here on the side to make it look like maybe it was part of the built-in couch and of course this little uh, table storage thing here on the edge and another triangle table here on the end with the entertainment system and TV. So this main window, this large window here, this was in a way the main idea I had in my head when I started this build, is I wanted to do this very long wide window, much like a couple of my other builds, but do something a little different that maybe looked out down to your patio or maybe another level of the house. So that wound up being the mini pool down there and yard, but also a great view of that bridge, like I said, and it just spans the entire width of the house, living room. And using these giant concrete squares as large pillars, but also the, the two concrete pillars that frame this window and the house. So from the kitchen, you can see the living room and all the way out to the window. The idea was to try and keep this whole living area and main floor up here just wide open open space. I like the open space builds much better or that style. And just off of the living area is the bedroom. Once again, open space, no doors. And that just leads in here. So the idea is this is a pretty small house. This is maybe a one person or a couple at the most. And with the open space everywhere else, I just figured uh, this was all you needed as far as separating the bedroom from the living area. This little feature wall here, some power armor, and once again, using a lot of the uh, concrete block as a texture on the wall, give it more of a modern look. And using a lot of the neon noir penthouse mod uh, has some furniture pieces that work really well for all kinds of things so this whole built-in bed area was a combination of you know some of the dresser pieces some of the table pieces and uh, 
combining different pieces and after a while they all start fitting together and look like it's actually you know built in like that i thought it worked well as this wall piece here and i think that turned out pretty cool i knew i wanted a pretty unique and cool feature type wall in the bedroom and i decided that this built-in furniture piece would do the job and looks pretty good more built-in dresser type stuff once again that's using all the different uh, furniture pieces and desk pieces to build all this and make it look like it's you know custom built-in and from the bed you also have this great view i really like this bedroom a lot downstairs here out to the patio so this is all a one level home so very small uh, just a living room bedroom bathroom and kitchen like I said pretty simple but it does have these stairs that lead down to the lower patio area and this is a cool little infinity pool so I really wanted to try this mainly because of the hillside that was another idea I had when I started building wanted to try and do some kind of infinity pool uh, type thing and with the rest of the house I kept the concrete block as the main feature of the house so the house is mainly built with the concrete blocks with a little hint and little highlights of the dark stone as I did down here with this little built-in barbecue area and bar and another water feature coming down over here that is built into the hillside. I added in these railings. I wasn't sure if I wanted to have railings here just because it would ruin the view if you're sitting down. However, I thought I would add them in and I decided to use these windows mainly because of the texture of the windows, the, the hexagon honeycomb style windows there just because the other ones were too clear and I thought it would be a little more modern and cool looking if maybe you know we had the, uh, the honeycomb look to it. I used a lot of the Institute floor pieces here just to clean up. I used a couple layers of them just to give this extra added uh, overhang. Give it a couple more contoured edges mainly just for design. I also use quite a bit of these, uh, I guess they're counters. Maybe they're Institute counters, but I thought they worked well for this build as, you know, retaining walls or something of that nature. And I kept using those around the property just to continue that theme. So as you see, is the planter there, use that there. Use it over here as a planter piece and by the uh, water feature there. And in a way, some of these accent pieces down by the floor as well. So they all tie in, they all work, and they all look the same. Now the infinity pool is pretty small, not exactly like you're going to be swimming laps, but just something maybe to jump in, relax. Now just below the infinity pool and the house here we have a little lower yard not really meant to be used but it's just a little extra part I added in to kind of clean up and finish off the house going into the hillside and then down into the ravine and once again I used a lot of those Institute counters that have that curve in them stack those up and those look like a pretty cool you know, retaining wall type thing. Yeah. Get this whole house. Just a nice pre-war modern look. So as I said in the beginning, I was down on the bridge looking up this hillside and seeing this kind of ravine gorge type thing and thought it'd be cool to have a house in the middle of that and use the sides and build the house into either side and stretch across. So that's what I came up with. It's a smaller house, pre-war, modern style. This is one of my favorite smaller builds, I think. And as I said, 
it's built into the hillside so if you can see from the top or the roof area is built into the hillside and in a way the roof and the house actually kind of become part of the landscape and I did think about maybe uh, covering the whole roof with uh, dirt or ground and, but then you know I didn't want to make it a cave or anything like that I just wanted it a cool modern looking house so I kept a combination of the roof and the hillside together now up top were the uh, concrete blocks hold up the house or meant to be the main those stuck up and like I said uh, had the wood texture on the top so I just added two layers of the white institute floors mainly to hide that wood that I didn't want to show but also it created kind of a cool architectural look to it that actually looks like it was designed that way and in a way it was but it wasn't I was basically just trying to cover up what I didn't want to see and that happens a lot in my builds I'm I'm basically trying to hide or cover up either a mistake or just a thing that didn't work out in the build itself I find sometimes that the solution to hiding things winds up being a pretty cool feature of the build and something I didn't necessarily think of in the beginning but it just kind of worked out Okay, so that pretty much concludes the tour of this house, a smaller house compared to some of my other builds. But this is just something I had an idea, I just wanted to build it out real quick. And uh, this location seemed to be perfect to fill that vision I had of some of those ideas. So I was able to build this one pretty quick, and then that's what got me on that idea of, you know, because it was so close to Fiddler's Green, that maybe there's some connection from this house to the mobile home park, and that led to the stairs leading up to the driveway, and then the driveway leading over to the actual mobile home park. So my idea is to keep building the mobile home park, see what we can come up with there, make that a little more pre-war, just like the house, and more of a cool mobile home maybe you know vacation spot type mobile home park is more what I'm thinking so I'll probably jump on that turn that into a let's build it series sometime in the future not sure when so keep an eye open for that so I'm gonna end this open house here once again thanks for stopping by thanks for watching and until next time keep building